Hi there, uh, Jerry from Devo here, and uh, I'm at Amoeba Records in Los Angeles, uh, and I'm going to show you what's in my bag. I found uh, this impossible to ignore, as controversial as it is, it's an uh, odd future uh, with uh, an outrageous, audacious lead singer, Tyler, the creator. I'm a fucking walking paradox. No, I'm not. Three sims with a fucking triceratops. Reptar, rapping as I'm mocking deaf rock stars. Wearing synthetic wigs made of anwars, dreadlocks. You've got to have balls to call yourself that. Anyway, there's a song on here called Yonkers. I, I really think if you're interested in somebody that's pushing the limit and carrying on in a kind of Dada, Agipop art tradition, um, like uh, N.W.A., Public Enemy, like Devo, you should hear this new record. I told him to quit bitching. It says in a fucking hot line for a fucking shrink. And then there's this. I won't talk as long about it, but I really like the kills. I've always loved the kills. And this new record is really great. You know, I'm glad to see people that can keep it up. And uh, there's a song on here, the first one, Future, starts slow that I really responded to. I've always liked their mix of, uh, of, of rock and techno and the darkness of uh, the sentiments. And uh, this, this, this is their third record, I think. I think it's the third. And I actually, I think it's an, uh, an amalgam of what was best about the first two plus an evolution. Try that. And then it's good to know that really old school guys, almost as old as Devo, can really still put out something that it's not just like, oh, we better put out something to make some money. This Beastie Boys record is, is excellent. I mean, it really is really strong. And sonically, I think they sound better than ever. They've had the, uh, the ability and the time to figure that out and work with great people. And I, I love OK. That should be a hit. And this is kind of off the wall, but very interesting. You know, Gil Scott Heron just died. He was a uh, very innovative uh, uh, black artist from the 60s whose most famous piece that broke through. He was a spoken word poet, but it was uh, The Revolution Will Not Be Televised. The Revolution Will Not Be Televised. The Revolution Will Not Be Brought to You by Xerox in Four Parts Without Commercial Interruptions. The Revolution Will Not Show You Pictures of Nixon Blowing a Bugle. Great. A great piece of spoken word proto-rap uh, set to music and this was his uh, last work before he died and this happens to be really cool because uh, Jamie XX from the group XX remixed this record and uh, I was really thankful that uh, Matt Deal turned me on to this because it probably isn't something I would have ever listened to you know so um, tip of the hat to Matt for that. I wouldn't be doing my job unless I mentioned this. This is so rare and I just couldn't believe I could find it here. This has been unavailable for 20 years. This was uh, our easy listening versions of our own songs. So we did, we played and recorded on purpose lounge versions of Devo songs. Of course it's twisted. So we would put this on while our crew was setting up because we, just, we saw no reason for them to play other rock bands or loud music with vocals before we came on. We wanted to clean it all out, you know, give people a break. And of course what happens is they loved it and said, where can we get it? And we never even thought of putting it out back then. And we go, oh, okay, we'll, we'll put it out. And that's what happened. Whenever we hear sounds, we are changed, we are no longer the same. Karl Heinz Stapphausen, the uh, formidable German experimental uh, music, concrete, prepared music, early electronic music, very, very uh, uh, 
abrasive and confrontational for its time. Uh, he used a lot of things like electric blenders. He'd record those. He'd take pieces of tape with machine noise and chop it up. And so it was early, early experimental music that was really in your face. And uh, and he went on to, to just put out so much volume of work, both live recordings and studio recordings that it's you know almost impossible spanning like 40 years ich weiß nichts anderes and then finally Danny Elfman's brother Rick Elfman created uh, a movie called Forbidden Zone shot in Los Angeles like in 1976 and, and 77 and um, featuring his brother Danny and much of it as a kind of devilish character who Danny's quite good at it and he does a uh, a Cab Calloway song uh, and he does a fantastic job of it you know you know white tux with white tails when you watch this movie it really holds up because it it doesn't even look trendy it doesn't look like anything you've ever seen and it's in black and white uh, and you 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 can watch this over and over it's an amazing and Danny Elfman's actually best performance I've ever seen him do. Well, son, let me tell you I'm so pleased to meet you. The boys that I've been expecting to greet you. As guests of honor in the house of the dead. Just relax, lay yourself down, say goodbye to your hand. Well, that's concluding what's in my bag uh, today, June 3rd. 2011.